Hey, it's Rich, the Louisiana Hobby Guy. You know, lately my mailbox has been exploding <laughs> with questions from people about the new uh, 1064 nanometer uh, IR lasers that are being launched by Xtool and Ortur. And uh, I just have to laugh when I see it because, you know, we're looking at uh, $500 IR lasers that people are assuming are going to do the same thing as a $5,000 or $3,000 fiber laser, and they're just not. So I wanted to take a minute today and maybe uh, quell some of the emails and messages and everything that uh, I've been getting on, on these 1064 lasers and talk about it a little bit and maybe let you know what you should expect to be getting for that five or six hundred dollars uh, if you were to buy one of these IRs from either Xtool or, or Tor and I don't think it's going to be what uh, you're expecting so uh, let's jump into that real quick and let's let's talk about the uh, fiber laser and I don't believe that these are fiber lasers I believe these are just 1064 nanometer uh, laser diodes so let's jump into that and uh, dispel some of the rumors that are going around about how Xtool and Ortor are getting into the fiber laser business. All right, so recently um, Xtool and Ortor have launched their new 1064 nanometer uh, diodes. So what is this? What is this that they're launching? Um, I'm figuring that it's just the basic diode this is not a fiber laser at all and one of the clues that you can get if you look at their advertising you're not going to see anywhere in their advertisement them either speak about or print fiber the word fiber and the reason for that is because they are just using a 1064 nanometer diode they are not using any fiber so what does that mean to you well that means that it's not going to do what you think it's going to do. Uh, this is going to maybe engrave metals. It will definitely engrave metals and at a very low speed and a very high power. And it will absolutely cut, as Xtool showed in their live video, 0 0.02 metals, which I have no idea what you would do with a 0 0.02 metal. That's, that's something that's like a piece of tissue paper. But anyway... They're probably using just this diode like you see right here. Uh, and this, ten, it is a 1064 diode and it'll go through a collimating lens and it'll emit that light and do its job. But that's all it will do. It's not like a fiber laser. If you look at a fiber laser, something like one of these pump lasers right here, you're looking at, you know, $695 for 1.02 watt fiber laser look at this nine watt down here 6390 now of course you can get them much cheaper uh, you can probably get these 1064 diodes here for maybe a couple hundred bucks you can probably get some pump lasers if you get a real economy one probably in the range of you know two to three hundred dollars a piece something like that but you're not going to have any frequency control whatsoever over this laser right here there is no control board. There is no fiber that it runs through. It's just completely deceptive, in my opinion, uh, or completely useless, one of those two. This is what you'll find inside a uh, typical... This is one setup that they have. And you can see these are all of the pump lasers here. And they all feed on the other side of this board. You'll see the wind. there are windings for the fiber. They all feed into the fiber. And then there are seed lasers, usually one or two seed lasers, that actually fire the laser on the other end. And uh, now these things happened in, in the millions or maybe billions of a second. It fires pulses. And what we see is a continuous laser beam, but it's actual, actual pulses themselves. If you look here, this is a combined laser here where everything is in one uh, unit, as opposed to over here where all of the laser diodes are separate. And this is the other side of the source, and you can see all of the fiber windings in here. One thing that you're not going to get with this 
that you will get with any of these in a real fiber laser is you're not going to get frequency control. So I'm going to guess that they're probably using a half watt diode, maybe. Uh, may, you know, maybe it's uh, 0.5 watts or somewhere in that area. I don't know what it is. I'm not an expert on any of this. I just know some of the basics and I'm not claiming to be an expert either. But I can tell you that for sure you're not getting a fiber laser. So maybe you've got a, a, a half a watt or a one watt or maybe even up, up to as much as two watts of power. It, it might be as high as two watts of power, the uh, actual 1064 diodes that they're using. Who knows? I don't know. I can't find that information anywhere. But let's give them the, the, the benefit of the doubt and say it's a, you know, a two watt laser diode. That's fine. Two watt laser diode is not going to do much. It's going to move very, very slowly. You're going to have to run that uh, laser at maybe one millimeter per second and 100 percent power uh, or maybe two or three millimeters per second at at the fastest to do your engraving and your and your cutting. And really, you're not going to be doing any cutting with this. So um, if you're going to be doing something that is, you know, uh, a 10 millimeter name on a ring or something like that, well, might be worth getting. You're only going to be able to do that name in one color because you'll have no frequency control. Uh, I'm going to guess that it's probably going to be somewhere between 15 and uh, 18 kilohertz on the frequency. And if I look at my Rakus in the back, that one is a 20 watt fiber laser. The frequency runs anywhere from 20 to 80. The JPT runs from zero up into the hundreds. So you can get all types of frequency control and all types of different colors and so on. So let's give them the benefit of the doubt. Let's say that these are two watt diodes. Uh, what metals are you gonna be cutting <laughs> with a two watt um, diode laser? Now I have uh, the 20 watt and the 100 watt fiber lasers and I don't cut metals with those. So, uh, you know, the advertising that you've got something that is able to cut metals, uh, in my opinion, is just uh, downright deceptive. And yeah, they did it on the live video, but if you looked at it, you could see that the metal was all bent up when he pulled the little circle out of it. Uh, you know, it's a leaf metal. It's it's maybe 0 0.02 uh, thick. So, what are you going to use that for? What what purpose does that possibly have? Why even talk about it cutting leaf metals like that? Uh, there really is no purpose, in my opinion. Now, engraving, that's a different story. And when you have the ability to control the frequency, which you will not with these uh, modules that they're coming out with, that's completely different because now you can change, you can anneal the surface, you can change the color of the surface. With, with these 1064 uh, lasers that are coming out with from Xtool and Autour, you're basically just going to be able to engrave and it's going to be so slow and so tedious that if you're doing anything larger than the size of a ring, you better sit back and grab a cup of coffee and turn on the TV because you're not going to be moving any faster than one, two, or three millimeters per second. So, uh, you know, as far as doing little rings or pendants or things like that, even the, the aluminum business cards are going to take a lot longer. And that's just because of the low power of these diodes. So you can more than likely do the aluminum business cards, the anodized aluminum, faster on your diode laser, your 455 nanometer blue light laser, than you can on this uh, 1064 infrared. So uh, I really don't see the purpose in this unless, hey, if you're a jeweler uh, or something like that, you know, uh, then I would say the 1064 from Xtool with the uh, RA2 roller accessory with the jewelry uh, tongs on it. You know, you'll be able to do rings and things like that, engrave people's names. Great buy. Maybe not for, you know, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen hundred dollars if you have to get the whole setup like that. You know, you might be better off going with uh, a bottom of the line 
fiber laser like the Atom Stack, what is it, the M40, I think it is, 1300 bucks. You know, that's a 20 watt fiber laser. Uh, I think Mr. Carve is another one that's, uh, you know, pretty reasonable. Uh, I have the probably the most reasonable, most wide, wide, widely used type of fiber laser, which is the Monport 20 watt back there. And that one is an economy fiber laser, but it has the Reka source. It has the EasyCAD 2 uh, board, control board in it. It's compatible with Lightburn. You know, uh, it's an all-around win-win. Probably one of the cheapest uh, Rakuses that you're going to find on the internet. And right now they do have a special. I'll drop a coupon code down below in the uh, show more section of the video if you want to take a look at it. Uh, right now they're on sale and you'll get an additional 10% off if you use my coupon code. But you can get into fiber lasers for not much more money. I mean, if you really want to do this, don't go with these with these two watt lasers uh, unless, like I said, unless you're a jeweler and you're going to specifically be using these for, you know, charm bracelets and uh, wedding rings and things like that. Uh, then it might work for you because that's the only thing that it's going to do and in a timely fashion. So um, ju just remember that without the control board, without the frequency control, and, uh, you know, some of the cheaper ones now, uh, like I said earlier, the uh, Atom Stack, I think, M40 20-watt fiber laser, that's 1300 bucks, and there's a reason for it. Uh, most pos uh, positive that you can only use CCAD with it. So, um, you know, that does not use the EasyCAD board. It's not compatible with EasyCAD or Lightburn, and uh, it's just a lot more difficult to use. So, if you're looking to get into the fiber market you know look for something like the the rakus the max the the jpt lasers that use the easycad 2 boards that would be compatible with lightburn because that is the program that you want to use to be designing your graphics uh, it is the number one program on the market and by the way for uh, those of you that don't know i am not affiliated with lightburn in any way shape or or form I get no discount by no get discount. I get no commission by referring people. This channel was developed just because the software is that great to use with lasers. So uh, a lot of people think that that this is an affiliate channel, and it's not. This is my own channel. It has nothing to do with Jason or Lightburn or uh, the company itself. Uh, so I just wanted to make that really clear. You know. Uh, I don't know why so many people think that uh, this is an affiliate company with Lightburn. Uh, it's, it's just not. This is my personal channel. But anyway, so if you're going to get into fiber lasers, do your research. Uh, look at what, you know, what you're looking to do with it. If you're looking to get a wide range of colors, I would recommend a JPT source. Uh, if you're looking for just a few different colors, uh, you know, the Reka source, uh, that runs from, uh, I think, 20 to uh, 80 kilohertz is going to work just fine. Uh, I get several different colors depending on the, on the metal that I'm using. And uh, if you want a wide variety, you know, the JPT, the 100 watt JPT, that, that does just a ton of different colors on metals. Uh, and of course, it depends on the metal. So uh, if you want to get into the fiber laser, laser, I suggest you do your research. And this is not a fiber laser. So I just wanted to make that clear that you are not getting a fiber laser for this money. And I, I just can't tell you how many people have been emailing and messaging me about it's how it's about time that somebody came out with an affordable fiber laser. Well, that hasn't happened yet. <laughs> these, these diode lasers, these pump lasers uh, that they use in the fiber machines are very expensive. And they will continue to be very expensive. And I don't see the market for uh, the cost coming down anytime soon. So <laughs> anyway, uh, I just wanted to get all of that cleared up, answer any questions for the people that watch my channel. Those are most of the people that are emailing and messaging me. And uh, I wanted to make it clear that you are not getting a fiber laser with the 1064 diode. And that's about it. <laughs> So anyway, uh, I hope I cleared that up. I hope you enjoyed this video today. And as always, 
I thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.